Hello, good evening. Hello. Half past seven. Half past seven on a Thursday night, session here two. We are. <laughs> so we are here tonight uh, with Tablet Academy looking at uh, Five Steps Digital and we are on planning tonight, session two. So you may have joined us live yesterday for our session one. Um, but if you haven't, you can catch that on demand on YouTube. Um, welcome if you're joining us live tonight, and also if you're watching on demand, demand on YouTube later on. Um, we're hoping you find this, this session tonight useful. We'll be looking at some other tools that we use for planning and be given some examples of how myself and Amanda are using them within our classroom and within education. So I think I will get sharing my screen and we will get started. Okay. I think I've had a great day and they've had your tea and you've got your feet up. I'm uh, looking forward to putting my pyjamas on. <laughs> <laughs> Not long. So we will be um, about 45 minutes like we did yesterday um, on our session two. And tonight we are going to be looking at um, a couple of tools, OneDrive, um, to do. And we're looking at the planner app. So if you have anything, questions that you want to ask, anything you want to comment on, then please do so in the chat within YouTube. Or you can also um, tag at Tablet Academy on Twitter and we will get looking at that and we can answer your questions tonight as they come up. Um, also, if you are using the Microsoft Educator Center, um, you can claim the code for tonight as well, which is down at the bottom. And that will allow you to log all the sessions that you're involved in. And then you can easily upload that to your GTCS profile for all your CPD. So for anybody who doesn't know who we are, my name's Sarah Clark. I'm a biology and science teacher um, over at Queen Anne High School in Dunfermline. I have got two kids of my own that are both at high school. Um, and I've recently added a fur baby who is a very big fur baby nowadays. Um, so I apologize if he ends up barking in the background. Um, and if anybody wants to contact me on Twitter, then I am at SFM36 on Twitter. Amanda? I am Amanda Pickard. Hello, everybody. Hope you're well. I'm um, primary school teacher, but at the moment I'm on secondment as a digital learning officer for my local authority. Um, outside of work and school, I am or was a powerlifting, crocheting, book reading human. Um, hopefully I'll be getting back to powerlifting. And I have various um, pets, Fluffy and Feathery. So if you hear any tweeting in the background, that is my budgies, Wilson and Kimball. Um, they have just woken up and uh, who knows what they'll get up to. So I apologise if there's any nonsense in the background. And if you would like to follow me on Twitter, I'm at AGOB Pickard. And uh, let's get started, I think. Yeah, Wilson and Kimball, they were a wee bit loud before we started. <laughs> um, well, I have got one that's playing Xbox in the background. I've got another one singing. So but, uh, we'll see how it goes tonight. It's later on in the day, so there's a little bit more noise going on in my house. I can hear um, but, Travis in the background rumbling around as well. So. <laughs> we will get started tonight. So one of the first things we want to look at is OneDrive, which I'm sure most people are familiar with. It is the cloud storage um, sharing facility that we have. For me, um, this is where all my files are stored. Um, and I can access it any device, whether it's on my phone, whether it's on my desktop, in school, outside of school. If I'm up at my mother-in-law's and I need to check something, I can easily do that as well. Um, but whether or not you are familiar with the sharing aspect of it. Now, with OneDrive within Glow, we get a huge amount of storage there. Um, in your own organisation, there'll be lots of storage there. I think we get, is it one terabyte that we get yeah. of, of sharing space? Um, so for all your file storage needs. But in terms of when I'm planning for my lessons, you know, we talked last day about Teams and having master documents sitting in Teams. My own personal documents and copies of other documents within the department are all sitting in my OneDrive for whenever um, I am going to need them. So once you've logged onto your Office 365, I'm assuming most people will be familiar with the files that they've all got set up and the folders and everything there. And just for anybody, though, that hasn't shared anything before or had a file shared with them, um, the easiest place to find them is over on the left-hand side. There's that little bit that says shared. And you can go in there and you will be able to see that these resources here, these are my eScoil resources that I have shared out tells me at the side that it's shared and there's a little kind of icon with a little person on it to show them that it has been shared and when you go in there 
it'll tell you what has been shared with you and what has been shared by you. And knowing, I think it's quite interesting to go through that now and again, have a little look and see what you've got sharing. I often share files on Twitter, a lot of the, the things that I have made on Twitter, uh, uh, that I have made in school, and people say, I've seen that. Is there any possibility you could share that with me? I have a file um, that says shared with others, and I just share that link out, and they have access to all the files in there. I have it set, so when you are sharing a file or a folder, just go back to this picture here, um, we're going to go and have a look just now, but it gives you the option when you're sharing to share it with people within your organisation, out with your organisation, um, with a web link, and also giving them rights to the document or whether you want them to be able to download it, which we don't want to spend lots of time looking at that tonight because that's more about the, the how you would use it, OneDrive rather than the why. But we wanted to show you in terms of planning and working with other people inside your school or outside of your school, this is a great way to collaborate together um, when setting up for lessons on meetings and so on. So what we've got here is we've got a little link um, that myself and Amanda have shared between each other. And if I go and click on it, it will take us to it. So it's a file. Um, we just called it Tablet Academy Stuff. So I'll just scroll down and you'll be able to find it. I've got lots of files in mine. In fact, I put it right at the start because I called it number one. And we have got one document in there. Now, because this is shared with Amanda, we can see that it says that it is shared here. It tells me who was last in and modified it. So I can see that Amanda's been in and she has modified that file. And if I click on the Word document, then we can go in and we can see the information that is in there. Now, what we've done is we've also put some comments in it. So here it's telling me straight away what has happened. Amanda has been on last. So we are sharing this document together. We're working together on this document and I can see what she has done. So this is really good if it's somebody maybe outside of your organisation. Um, she's updating it as we go just now. Um, so you get it live. But if it's with a student that you're sharing with as well, you can see exactly what the last thing was that they've worked on. So when a student tells you, um, yeah, I was working on it last night, you can have a look at the document and say, no, you weren't. Um, or, yep, I can see what you've done and you can check it in live time. But when it comes to planning and preparation and you're looking to make changes, what you can do is there's the comments up here. And this will happen on any um, Word document. You've got other options like this in PowerPoint as well and Excel. You'll be able to see what the changes are and then you can add some comments. So you can see here I've gone in and I've added one said, can we check the spelling? There's a few anomalies in there. And we also add to, needed to add something about the planner app. And Amanda herself has gone in and she has commented on it. She has told me what she's done. I can see exactly what she's done. And I can see because there's a little red line there, what she's working on at the moment together. So you don't even need to be communicating in a meeting. You could be collaborating on a document, different parts of the school, different parts of the world, world and being able to put in a comment and say that, you click on a new comment and I can say, uh, that's great, can see your updates now. And I can send that and that will come up for Amanda who's working on it and we can see where the comments are. This is the, the newest comment here and I can go to each comment and I can see which one they are. And once we've maybe actioned something, if you click on the three dots, I always say go to the three dots, you'll get so many more options in there. You can then delete that thread and it will get rid of that comment there. So you can see the comments that you need to action, you can see the, the things that you need to do. And I think a lot of the time we, we don't make the most use of the features that we've got. This is a feature that I think is fantastic. I don't use it enough, um, usually because I'm collaborating with people in person, but for people that I can't be next to and I can't work with, then we can up update our documents together. Um, we do it for marking schemes probably more than anything else where we add comments at the side. Do you think this should be added to the marking scheme to award this to the students? Amanda, is there anything that you want to add about the collaboration side of OneDrive? No, I just think it's a really great way of uh, planning. If you can't be in the same place at the same time, you can be in, you know, I've, I've used this with uh, my stage partner 
working on our medium term planner across the stage and we've been you know at home working on it separately and we can both see what each other's doing and it's just a great way of helping to plan whenever is convenient for you and you don't need to make sure that you've got time after school or before school you can actually work on it in the same document and nobody's worrying about emailing that back and forward or is that the right version I've got it's live all the updates are in one place and you know that you're both working from the absolute most up-to-date document so I think it's just a great tool that we probably you're right we probably don't use enough mm -hmm. I think because we have a lot of our documents sitting in teams um and sitting in for, for our department sitting in teams and then uploading them to OneDrive eh, uploading them to OneNote we probably don't make enough use of this but for personal documents for documents that are not necessarily linked to um my classes or my school for something like this when me and Amanda were sitting down and, and planning this session it, this is a great way um to use it and to add comments and to see what you're doing and then once you're done with it you can upload it wherever you want as well and take it off your own personal OneDrive and as I said there's um the three dots there is giving you more options and when it goes to share um this is where you can change here so if you are just sharing so I share files with people um, across the whole of Scotland so that they can access that folder of documents that I have and I normally just set it anybody with a link and then once I click select apply I can then copy that link and I can paste that into a tweet I can paste it into an email um, I can paste it into a team you can paste that link anywhere but what it does say is it's a link to view only so myself and Amanda, because we were collaborating there, I'll just go back and click share again, because we were collaborating and I wanted her to be able to edit it, I then went in, I just added her email. And usually she popped up because she's within my organisation. Although she's not coming up just now. <laughs> Internet's a bit slow. Pop in the email. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, um, and then click send and she will get an email about it and she'll have access and as soon as she goes into her OneDrive and she clicks on that shared document that file will appear there for her to work on as well so that's essentially it's not a lot um, but that's one of the ways that we can be using OneDrive when it comes to our planning and collaboration so next thing is the to-do app It'd be really interesting if people could um, comment and let us know if you've used this. Are you using the to-do app? Have you heard of it and you're not using it? Um, because this has become the app that I use now for all my to-do lists. I have bits of paper everywhere. And this is the one now that, that I take with me, access it on my device, but I'm also accessing it on my phone. So if you go into Glow and go into your Office 365 or go into your own tenancy and go into your 365, you will see the to-do app there. And it's this got this big blue tick on it. And it's essentially lists. It allows you to plan your day, um, your tasks. You can see here down the side, there are. this is your day. So you can add tasks for a particular day. You can put ones in for in advance. Um, so putting a specific date on them. The the one of the ways I use it is when I'm not necessarily in school when I'm trying to plan um, conferences. If I'm out for a day or I've, um, I like to write down who I'm wanting to meet, when I'm wanting to meet them, the things I've got to do. Um, the last conference that I was at actually, which was a long, long time ago, I think it was maybe Bet, um, back in January 2020, I had all my kind of tasks that I wanted to do for that first day sitting in there. So you can add a list for a specific thing. So it could be a, a specific event in your school that you're planning for. Um, uh, and you can add down all the tasks that you've got to do and then you just check them off as you do them. And there's nothing better than being able to um, tick off a task as it's being done. It gives you a nice wee ding when you've ticked that task off as well. I know. Just uh, And you know once you've done that one task, it's going to be, um, your day is just going to be, get better. But Definitely. I think my favourite feature from it was the flagged email. So I flag emails all the time if something comes in and I think it's an important one I put a little flag um, on it so that I can find it easier and I'm scrolling through my emails 
And then when I came across to do, I realized that actually all my flagged emails are held together. So I can go in and see anything that I have flagged up sits there um, in my flagged email section and I can go through them, can go back into my email and I can think that was something that I had to action. That was something that I had to do, which has just reminded me, I do have a little evaluation to do for um, micro bits and get that sent back as soon as possible. So all my flag messages are kept in one place. So I don't then need to be scrolling back months and months and months on my email trying to find them. That's brilliant. We've had a few comments actually. We've got Tracy, I think it's Tracy here. She's got it on her phone, but she doesn't use it. And we've got Dory Littlefeet, love that name, um, has heard of this but never used it. And, uh, yeah, flagged emails, used for, for easily finding them, definitely. And yeah. the, having it, I mean, I often set it up and I, and I add things when I'm on my device or if I'm sitting at my desk at school. But when I'm then out and about, if I'm around the school, I part of my remit, I have a digital remit in my school. So I'm out and about, I'm working with other staff, and I will walk past and staff will say to me, this morning, I was in the door five minutes, member of staff said, having a problem with this, can you have a look at it? And I says, right, I'll, I'll get back to you. And I was straight on my phone, and I was straight into my to-do app, and I was writing down what I had to do so that I didn't forget later on the day, and I can pick it up for tomorrow um, as well. So having it there just means I can keep adding to it, getting it longer and longer, and then once I've done a task, I can tick it off. Brilliant. Fabulous. So mine is, um, I used to do all the time. So to do is about your personal list. These are your tasks that are for you. Um, so as you can see, I've got lots and lots of different kinds of lists. Um, I've actually put a square around one of them because um, that was a book group that I was in and I had a schedule of reading chapters so I made a list for this book which is uh, Brene Brown's Dare to Lead and I had my schedule and I just made a to-do list so that I could tick off each chapter or each task that I did as I went through with this book club so it was just a really brilliant way of me getting organized and you can see I've got personal lists in there as well Christmas last year what I was getting for presents um, for my class, uh, plans that I've got for my loft. So I, I do literally use it for, for everything and anything. And it, it it's a brilliant way to get organized. And you can actually pull out specific tasks from different lists and put them into your day. So even if I've got tasks that I've added to different lists, I can go add to my day, add to my day, because I'm going to get through these things today. So you'll see that today I had um, three specific jobs that were really important that I had to get done today in amongst all the other emails that I was doing. Uh, and that's how I planned my day. I just actually pulled those things from various different lists that I had to get done. So um, this also is great on my devices. I've got the same app on my iPad and my iPhone. And it looks and, and actually works just exactly the same as the online app. Although, because your screen is smaller on my iPad, where the red arrow is pointing to, that's what you see, and you can just scroll across. So you can actually just select a list and it'll open it up, or you can actually scroll across to see the more detailed view. So I love it. So I've got a few more screenshots to share with you. Um, I've put a square around this one because you'll notice that there's little stars next to these, these tasks, and that is me. I've actually made these tasks important so I've created them and these are tasks from all sorts of different lists but I've just said at the time that those were important so when I select that important list you'll actually bring up all the tasks that have ever been important that I've had to get done because of a time scale and anything from any list with a star that I've clicked on will come up in that sort of summary of my important tasks from all my lists. So I just wanted to show you that that was a, a really useful way of identifying. I've got this big list, but actually there's some of those things that are more important than others. And I can actually just summarize those by just clicking on important and I can just uh, get a kind of shortened list for my must do today. Do not delay, don't procrastinate any longer. Um, the next slide shows you my plan tasks and plan tasks are literally tasks from any um, any list or from to do or planner. And um, so you'll see even the ones, um, the top ones where it says today, it says tasks. So I know that those ones are from my to do app, 
but the ones from tomorrow and later, it actually has in grey underneath, there's Sphero Bowl availability and Duo Flip availability. Those tasks are tasks that I've created in Planner, in a team that are assigned to me. Um, so those are my planned tasks and they come up on my to-do list which is really handy. So I don't need to be checking more than one app if I'm just focusing on what I've got to do in a day or a week. Um, the next slide is assigned to me. So those are anything that's been created by anybody from any team and any planner that has been assigned to me and it just gathers them all in the one place. So I'm in lots and lots of different teams and lots of those teams have at least one planner and some teams have a planner for every channel. So instead of having to go into every team, every channel and check every planner, it just gathers everything together in the one place and I can check it from the one place, which is really, really handy. And I can keep that obviously mobile. I also get email reminders. So I forgot to do something. I forgot I had something on my list for today. And um, I actually got a reminder email. So I set notifications. You just make sure you set your notification set your settings to receive notifications and I got prompted to don't forget you've got to make sure that this is it was something from the digital lending library that had to be returned and I had to send an email to remind the borrower that it was being collected tomorrow and uh, and, and this is all powered by this app uh, so super super handy I never forget anything anymore I don't have to write down on bits of post-it notes or I do have a notebook but to be honest, I use my to-do list all the time more than my notebook. Occasionally, if I'm very, if I'm sitting down at a desk, then I'll write it in a in a notebook. But normally, if I'm on the hoof and I think, oh, I need to remember that, it could be an ASDA, and I think, oh, I need to remember that, and I'll instantly get my phone out and add it into my to-do list and my to-do um, app. So absolutely brilliant for me, and I would highly recommend it. Um, the next also one, the fact that they're they're talking to each other as well, Amanda. So yeah, you know, notebooks talk to each other to-do list, planner that we're going to look at as well. And it's pulling all those important things that, that you have to get done um, in your day all into one place. And as you said, you go on there and everything that's linked with all these other apps as well is just put into that one place so you can see exactly what it is that has to happen. Yeah, and I don't need to worry about, I'm constantly losing little bits of paper. So um, that list that I've just showed you, that first screenshot there is what I see in my phone and I can open up anything. But one of the things I really love, another thing I love about this app is I can sort my tasks by importance, by due date, by all of these different ways. Um, and sometimes I find myself, genuinely it's by due date, but sometimes I'm thinking, well, have I added it to my day? What and I, Or I can't remember what I've added so it'll be alphabetical or I'm looking for a creation date so it just gives you lots and lots of options to sort through your tasks and sometimes you know I might be looking for oh, I'm not sure I want to do my list in this order so I just change it um, the other thing is you can actually share a list and to do even though it's your personal to do lists so I can create an invitation link and invite somebody else to edit and add to my list so that's another great way of making a list to do with a stage partner or with, um, I don't know, your department or your faculty or your level or your school, you can actually start your own to-do list and then share it and invite people in to add things to it. I have never done this because they're my to-do lists. And I'll explain why in a little minute, because we have another app that does that kind of thing for us and it's called the Planner app. I think it'd be um, quite good if you've got an event that you're organising with somebody else. I'm just trying yeah. to think, you know, if we have like STEM days and that kind of thing, it would be quite good creating a list and then putting all the tasks in there. But I know you're going to share with us something better. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the next slide takes us right on to Planner. So Planner is available in Office 365 in Glow. And um, there's also an app and it, it pretty much works this exactly the same whether it's online or in the app on any device. It is this is really about organizing, collaborating on teamwork. So it's not a personal to-do list. This is about working with your colleagues to create plans and assign tasks, track that progress. And um, as I said, it works on the desktop or in the app. And this is actually a screenshot of um 
my overview. So this is my planner hub and I have one of my teams is pinned. So I can actually pin as many teams I'm in that has a planner attached to it in this planner hub. So I'm actually on the Edge browser and I took a screenshot of the planner. I opened up planner from Office 365 and Glow and this is the first thing I see. It has this planner hub and it shows me just an overview of all of the teams that I'm in that have a planner app attached to them, all the teams and all the channels. And I've just, just this one in particular is the team that I'm working for at the moment. Although I'm a primary school teacher, I'm on secondment at the moment. So I'm developing digital learning through this, the local authority. So I'm working with a small team, but we have our own Microsoft team and we've just put a whole lot of tasks that we need to get done in that team and that's why it's planned because that's where I'm getting most of my tasks for for my secondment and that shows an overview of all the tasks that planner hub all the tasks whether they're assigned to me or not everything that's been planned everything that's been assigned everything that's in progress and there's a few late tasks as well but we've got good reason why they're late and um, sometimes some things happen and we just haven't gone back and updated those dates uh, for good reason because you know they still need to be done but then maybe um we've got other things that need to be done first so that's a kind of brief overview of planner um, Amanda, and would you say then the difference between that and to do is the fact that i'm i'm learning about the planner one here because i yeah. personally I'm, I'm not using planner that to do would be for your own personal planning and yeah. then planner would be for kind of group tasks and things yeah. as well yeah, and that's why I don't invite anybody onto my to-do lists because I would be planning collaboratively with colleagues with a planner, the planner app. But, you know, you do get your plan or sign tasks from planner added into your to-do list. So you don't need to check two things if you don't, you don't, you know, you don't need to do that. But it's good to be able to use the planner, plan those tasks with your team or your colleagues and or even with students you know you can have a planner added to your class team and your students can be adding tasks so you could have a planner attached to a channel for a group of students that are working on a project and they can assign all their tasks to each other they can make a list or multiple tasks and then assign it to um, whoever's in that team so that can that can be done with students as well so, be great yeah. for digital leaders. Eh? Be great for digital leaders. Definitely. Absolutely. That's a brilliant use for it. Definitely. So, yeah, I don't invite people into my personal to-do list because that's about me planning my own things to do. But Planner is about that collaborative working with colleagues or pupils or students, whatever they're doing. So um, the next um, slide, um, so I've got a couple of pictures to show you. So this is in my team and this is when I click on, I've attached the planner as a tab to the top of the general channel and we put everything in here. So at the top, you'll see that there's STEM, CLP and digital and those titles are called buckets. So it literally is just a pile of tasks that are relating to STEM to CLPL, to digital, and we've got lots of other buckets and it's a way of organizing. We've also got tags. Um, so we create tags and you can color code the tags and you can see that the tasks have actually been assigned to different team members. So you can see a lot of the ones that I've got, there's my little um, icon and my colleagues that I work with, their icons, and you can assign a task to more than one person. So sometimes it'll be all three of us on a task or just one or two of us or even just individuals. So we've got lots of ways of organizing um, the planner. And this view is called the board. And it just literally is different piles. If you think about each of the buckets as a pile of post notes, it was a pile for STEM, a pile for CLPL, a pile for digital, a pile for the digital lending library. I've got a pile for different things. So they're just listed in that way. Um, the next, if you click on the next, um, this one, it shows you the charts and that gives you the overview, really what you saw in that planner hub, all the tasks that are have been created, it's not started in progress, late and what are completed. Um, and it gives you kind of graphs and things like that, which 
for me, it's not so important. This is just a small team that I'm working within, so these things are maybe not so important. But at the end of my secondment, this is going to be really important in terms of showing what has been accomplished sort of thing. So I can pass this on to senior leadership. And, um, and I guess this would be pretty good for pupils to see the progress that they made in a task or a project, Sarah, for mm -hmm. secondary. Yeah, yeah. So, and the next one is the schedule. So not only does planner allow you to organize your tasks, it actually shows you on a kind of calendar, everything that's planned. So if you've got more and more and more tasks, you can actually look at this schedule and think, oh, act, we've got a lot of things happening in January. There's far too many things. Maybe we need to rethink our planner and our schedule. So this is a, another good way of making sure that you're, you've got capacity to, get through everything that you need to get through and um, and make sure that the workload is, is shared out and and you're not overwhelmed with tasks. So I do use this scheduling view quite a lot just in terms of making sure that, you know, there's one day doesn't have 12 tasks and the next day only has one task. So I'm really kind of making sure that there's a sort of sharing out across the, the week or the month um, of all the tasks. So if we move on to the next one, I have this one is um, I'm using a team as a kind of booking system for our digital lending library. And this obviously has multiple channels and each channel has its own planner. And I book out the equipment on each of those planners. And that's how I assign those tasks to whoever is delivering that kit. And that will come up on their to do list. Or, and it'll also come up in our planner. So it's a really good way of making sure that nothing gets missed, everything's organized. Um, I see that there's um, some questions coming in. Is there any way to link the to-do app on Glow with a corporate account so same list appears on both accounts? <laughs> I don't know. I'll have a little look while you're going through and see. I don't I know the answer. I actually don't that. know the answer to that question, but I would be interested to see if that would be possible. Um, in the same way that you can do in Microsoft Outlook, you can have multiple accounts in the app. Mm -hmm. That would be a great use, Miss Aird. Thank you very much for that. That's that's a brilliant one. Um, if you don't mind um, jumping on a slide, Sarah, I'm just going to show a quick kind of overview of what it looks like when you add a task. It's super easy. There's quite a few things you can do. You can just enter. The first picture is enter a task name and you can enter quickly lots of different tasks just by typing in the task name press enter next task name enter next task name enter and then go back and set the start date the due date and assign it later on the second picture to the right hand side of the slide is i just created a blank one test and this is what in more detail when you go back into that after you've added the task and you go back into it this is all the information that you can add so you get to assign it to any member or owner of your team. Um, you can add a label and you can create the labels right there. And there's lots of different colors that you can choose from and you can rename them. So that is entirely editable. You put it in the bucket. So that's those piles. So um, that was in the digital lending library bucket. So you can create it directly in the bucket or you just create from any bucket and then move it into the bucket that you want later. You can make not started, in progress, or completed. Um, priority is great. You can change the priority and start date and end date, which is absolutely crucial for, for something that is uh, like the digital lending library or a project that you need to do. Notes is a brilliant one. It is literally anybody who is in the team can go and add notes. I found out about this. I did this. I did that. And there's also a checklist. And I use the checklist a lot. Um, really because it's a to-do list and I like ticking things off of my to-do list. So within that task, I can have maybe six or seven steps and I can tick them off as I go. And I also can add attachments. And attachments can include things like, um, you can have documents, you can have uh, links, or and you can even um, attach a SharePoint site. So everything can be going in there. And the comments part is um, similar to the comments idea that you saw when Sarah and I were demonstrating collaborating in Word on OneDrive. 
you can put in the comments and send it off to the people who are, have been assigned to do this task. So you can keep updates. So if somebody hasn't had a chance to go back and check on this task or the progress of the task, if you're sharing the task with somebody else, they can type in a comment and send it off to you and you'll get that information sent out. So that's really super handy. Um, let me see, what next have I got for you? Assigned to me is brilliant. So anything that is assigned to me, that is actually powered by the To Do app. So, and it shows tasks that you have added through the app, Outlook tasks, flagged emails, or planner tasks. Anything that is assigned to you um, will show up here. So any task that you have been added to or assigned to on a planner will appear on your to-do list. So to-do is a super powerful little app that actually integrates Outlook and planner and to-do. Ideal. Thank you very much, Microsoft. I, this is why I love these apps. Absolutely brilliant. And, and um, the next one is really just showing you kind of different ways of filtering these tasks. You know, I usually come in on a Monday and I look about what I've got to do today and this week and next week to see if I can get on with anything. The next, and I've got a few other wee pictures here, Sarah. One is just shows you the drop down menu for priority and filter and also um, by group progress. So very often I'm searching for things, see if I can get ahead of the game. When is that due? What's urgent? What's um, not a very important or a very uh, important task to be done right this minute? but I can maybe get ahead of the game. So those are just different ways of filtering out and searching for your tasks. So once they're all in there, it used to be years ago, I would have lots of little uh, post-it notes and I would put them in order and I would scramble them up and I would throw them out. But this way I can actually do this really kind of intuitively. I can find out what I've got to do today or tomorrow, this week, next week, what priority wise. And I can really make sure that I'm getting through all the tasks and we're all super super busy but also I, I can imagine that this would be pretty useful for students if they're working on a collaborative project and uh, helping them decide what to start with what to get on with and how to plan their work properly so I'm i know you don't I'm thinking with my advanced hires, um, they have a, a project to do which at the moment you know it's not happening um this year but hopefully it'll be back next year and they have to you know plan and test and do a big write-up and the, the number of tasks that they are going to have to do for that um i think when you're up at that level it's lots this kind of thing and um, whether it's in to do with them or planner because they are working on their own um but they could list all of them science baccalaureate we do as well i'm thinking about these kind of things so any anything that a student's got to do where they are having to to plan um or myself having to plan for an event, I, I definitely know where this would be going in. That's great. I and mean, if anybody else is using this or hasn't used it and is inspired to use it, please let me know, let us know what you're doing with it. Put it on Twitter. The last slide literally is um, just, you can actually create a planner online, Office 365 online, and it shows you super easy, give the plan a name and add it to an existing Microsoft group. I would say keep them private only members that you are adding to that planner should be able to see it um, and then or what I normally do is I just go into my team choose my channel add the tab click on tasks by planner you can you don't even need to keep the name planner the tab can be called anything that you want and um, and that's it it's as simple as that and you're just good to go get ready off you go get your plan all your tasks in there it gives you a standard to-do list at the top of the bucket. You can just put everything in the to-do and then create buckets that you need as your project evolves, as you start working out how to organize the, the tasks and uh, start assigning and uh, yeah, never miss a deadline again. So although I'm not in class at the moment, um, I would definitely be using this for deadlines that I've got throughout the year so school reports or um, observations that I've got to do I would be sitting thinking about how I could incorporate planner or and to do to make sure I get through everything and that that's it that's a very quick whistle stop tour we're slightly early on time so if anybody's got any questions um popped up and the I was looking at 
thinking of that as well. I mean, I know you you added it to the, the a tab in your team. Yeah. So you can add it as a tab and you can put in all the, the tasks that you've got to do with that team, with the, the group of, of staff or students that are in that team. But then when you go into the planner app, everything is then pulled together from all yep. across those multiple teams so it's yep. put in one place um yep. i had a little look miss Ed had asked about um multiple accounts um we could maybe put this up on twitter after but i've had a little look and it does say you can easily switch between your work and personal account particularly on your phone so it just says when you go in you just add an account and you should be able to then add so um i'm sure miss Ed is the same local authority as me so she would be able to add um her corporate account there and her Glow account. And then I don't know if it puts them all on one, but you can toggle between the two. So that might be an option. We can have a little look and, and see what else it says with that. There's quite a few people talking about, yeah, they thought that would be a great idea to work with with the digital leaders. I know um, at uh, Computing at Falkirk High, they have used it in the past with their digital leaders. Um, yeah. and said it would be a great idea for their uh, advanced higher students as well when they're planning their project and developing those skills with the students that they can then take on when they are um, once they leave school and they're off at university and they've got to or college or workplace um, and they've got planning to do for things as well I think it really helps that they've, they're familiar with this kind of tool as well <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Fantastic. I'm definitely going to go and investigate how to add um, another account to the to do app. I can't quickly see how to do it in here. I'll have a little look. So if you've got any other questions, um, please pop them in the chat or stick them on Twitter and we'll get back on to it. There is a little survey um, that has just gone up in the chat. We would love for you to fill that in just to get a little bit of feedback. Um, if you haven't redeem the code please do so as well and myself and Roz are back next week so we're on to our next step so this is the five steps so today this week's been planning um next week we are on assessments we're actually on this for the next two weeks we're going to be doing um assessments and we're going to be looking at all the tools and the way that we use them for our assessments um and yeah lots of them so we're, we're in the midst of planning that one just now get the planner app out, out for that and we will be back on wednesday, wednesday. thursday wednesday. Next week. same time four o'clock on the wednesday half past seven on the thursday um we'll be live watching it on demand as well so thank you for joining us and i hope you have found the session useful i am just going to stop sharing my screen come back to us fantastic Please let us know how you get on with all of these things with collaborating in OneDrive and using the To-Do app and Planner app. I, I love them all and use them all all the time. So I'd love to know what everybody's uh, going to end up using them for. Uh, Quick addition to the chat. It is at the top, drop Ooh. down underneath your email. That's where you can add it. Oh, thank you. Every day is a school day. I love that. <laughs> when oh. you're in to do Add your not in, there we not go. in my iPhone. Hmm. No, definitely can do it on your. Uh... That's interesting. Probably I'll like. To investigate. Yep. I'll definitely I'll need to go investigate on, on Twitter later on. Yes. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Hope you find it useful. Go and make sure you redeem that code. Put that on your to-do app. <laughs> yeah, but oh on android okay on android that's one for you guys see you soon bye, bye.